Yes, welcome back. Zanzi is still opening right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show on S3. And we're talking about everything when it relates to Health Tuesdays and carrying on that conversation with us, some specialists right now. Now, the number of men being diagnosed with late stage cancer is on the rise. And this is, of course, a large issue. And raising awareness around doing regular self checks is of massive importance. Now, this morning, we are joined by not one, but two medical professionals this morning. And friend, familiar face, Dr. Emil Reed is back with us. And he's going to be taking us through a few questions on social media and uh, on top of that we've also got another doctor you've seen him performing we've seen him chatting to him earlier he's doing the the fitness with me and also a cancer survivor in part two we'll be chatting to him about more of that but dr emil reed uh, is here as well as the other uh, doctor so you guys can come through on facebook with any questions that you do have this morning we are here to serve you mzanzi but doc how are you doing this morning thanks for Fantastic. joining us Fantastic. great to be here Ralph. it's always a pleasure having you you are a wealth of knowledge advice and almost inspiration when it comes to health and uh, looking at this topic right now, cancer organization released something startling. I'm mean, looking at the facts here. It says the lifetime risk for prostate cancer in men in SA is 1 in 17. Why is this number so high? Shocking. Yeah. Shocking. If one actually look at cancer in South Africa, you know, I see patients almost on a daily basis mm. presenting with prostate cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer. And I mean, 1 in 16 is a shocking statistic. The big reason if we look at South Africa, we actually don't know why it's that, that, that high. Maybe yeah. it's better technology to make the diagnosis. Maybe it's better awareness and people are aware what to look out for, hence presenting to the health practitioners. And in South Africa, if we look at prostate cancer associated with our black African ancestry, which is shocking. So more so in the black communities as opposed to the colored and white communities. Sure. But it, the, the, the most important thing is it affects everybody. Okay. So people need to be aware of it. So maybe let's get a little bit educated here. Let's start off with exactly the function of the prostate and maybe the testes as well. What exactly is that purpose being served in those organs there? Let's, let's start off with a, with a prostate. The prostate is a small hazelnut gland that we find just below our bladder and it surrounds the proximal part of our urethra. Mm. So from the bladder going out, uh, urine going out to the, out of the penis in front, the, the, the prostate actually surrounds that area. So yeah. one can, can think if that the prostate enlarges, it can actually cause difficulty for you to urinate and things like that. But the main reason for us to have a prostate is the prostate actually provides the sperm with nutrition, nourishment in order to produce semen. And, and without the prostate, you cannot produce good semen at all. If you look at the testicles, it's similar to the ovaries in females. Mm -hmm. and, and the main function of the, the testicles is one, to produce the male hormone called testosterone. And number two, to produce sperm. So two very, very important yeah. male reproductive organs. No, definitely. Now, so look, it's a conversation that I think not many gents and many men are actually having, and maybe not whether it's comfortability, just lack of communication or understanding. Yeah. Regardless, I feel like uh, now more than ever, we need to be doing some sort of a regulation or a check on ourselves Good. to make sure, I guess, do we have it or not? Is that a possibility? Can we do any self-checks? If so, what are they? I mean, I'm sure Mzanzi would love to know right now um, for myself, for anyone that might be concerned, looking at the age that it's affecting us at sure. as well. For sure. What exactly do we do or what can we do to make sure or, or, or check on ourselves? When it comes to, to, to prostate, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of self-checks you can do except to be aware of it and to see your health practitioner about it and to report symptoms associated with, with uh, prostate disease. When it comes to testicular disease, I mean, it's important for all of us who have teenage boys in particular to ask them once they reach puberty is to then, similar to what we do for the ladies, to show them how to do uh, a testicular check and they should at least do it once a month. The best time to do it is just after a hot shower or after a hot bath, okay. you know, when the testicles are down in your scrotum. The important thing then is to actually use your hand 
and take your, your four fingers, put it in the back of the testicles, and actually use your thumb to actually feel the structure, okay. to feel the, the surface area, and also to, to make yourself aware of the other structures, like the spermatic cord, epididymis as we call it as well because they are normally there and and if you feel it very often like on a monthly basis you will be able to feel if there is a difference so you're not going to always have pain you're not going to have a mass and you need to know whether that mass that you're feeling is normal and was it there a month before yeah. the time so it's important like men <clears throat> the same as females that do breast examinations on a monthly basis, mm. we should actually teach that to our teenage boys yeah. and also share it with our friends because that's not a conversation that we are frequently having around the fire so or around true. the table. Yeah, and it's I a sensitive it's, issue. And it shouldn't be because it's as normal as anything and I think all gentlemen should be getting involved in it and it sounds as simple as that. Just having the conversation, opening up to the reality of what's going on right now. There's no reason to shy away from it like Dr. Emil says. And of course, always a pleasure having you here. We are going to get into a part two of this in just a bit. So don't go anywhere, Mzanzi. Some more on Health Tuesdays coming at you. It's my feel good. Welcome back, I'm Zanzi. Of course, it's South Tuesdays here on S3. We're opening up as the Feel Good Breakfast Show continues. And we're talking about something quite important, especially for gents right now. Now, the five leading cancers in men are prostate, colorectal lung, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and bladder cancer, with a startling stat of one in 17 South African men at risk of developing prostate cancer in their lifetime. Now, we're sitting down with medical doctor and cancer survivor, Dr. Michele Van Zaghi, to chat about his cancer experience and what that difficult road traveled has entailed and of course for you out there that's watching right now great information coming through but if you have any questions for our professionals they're here to serve us some zanzi head over to our facebook page right now ask those questions because in part three we're going to be addressing it and both oh, hopefully helping you out with this doc crazy crazy journey man it's incredible i, did, I had no idea even until you've just mentioned it now because you're looking like an absolute healthy specimen but talk us through the journey man i mean uh, discovering you had cancer a shock on its own. What was the process like? How did it happen? When did it happen? And uh, yeah, take me through it, man. Yeah, so I mean, last year, January, I was busy with my medical internship. Yeah. Um, and I, I was, like I was just saying to you, I was a completely healthy young guy, 26 years old. Training for um, a triathlon, right? Training for yeah. a triathlon. Um, and I'd noticed a testicular lump. And I think most people would tend to live in denial. And, and, and because going to a urologist or being examined is not something that everyone wants to go yes. through. Um, I think we tend to live in denial and we expect these things to go away on their own. Um, but I didn't. I went to see a ur urologist um, and January 2020, I was 26 years old, the diagnosis was made. Um, and in the next day I was in theatre having the operation. And, and from then I've gone through uh, an operation and chemotherapy. Um, so yeah, that's my story, what, that's my journey. What, what was that process like? I mean, obviously a dramatic change in life. I mean, things get thrown in perspective from something as simple as a self-diagnosis. And again, I have to highlight the importance of that, but post the discovery, post the diagnosis, that treatment's not easy, right? What was that journey like for you? How long did that take? I mean, you believe you went through chemo, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, was, I went through about five, six months of chemo. Um, but I think why, the reason I want to be here so badly is because Six months is not that bad. Essentially, I had an early diagnosis. I had stage one cancer, which means that the cancer hadn't spread anywhere in my body. Um, and testicular cancer is actually quite an aggressive cancer if you leave it unattended to. Oh, until it's um, so it late. spreads across the entire body, predominantly to the lungs. And, and if that happens, your duration of treatment, your quality of life after treatment is so much worse. Um, so that's why early diagnoses and self-screening it's so important. I mean, if I hadn't presented it without symptoms, like I said, I mean, the only reason I presented is because I examined myself. Yeah. Had I not done that, I may have not had been to a urologist yet, and I may have still been living with cancer. And making the diagnosis now, my life would have been significantly more different. I would have had prolonged chemotherapy, and, and I wouldn't have been as healthy as I am now. So, I mean, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to, to detect it, but not only to detect it, to do something about it. Yeah. 
men in general, um, we, we are so vulnerable. We don't like talking about sexual health or testicles. It's, it's interesting. I mean, if I tell my friends I have testicular cancer, they're always like, wow. What, what do you think that is about, actually? I don't Why? get it. And, and yeah. something I can relate to, and I was having the conversation with Dr. Emil Reed earlier, I noticed women are a lot more comfortable speaking about having their self-checks and diagnoses, but yeah. gents on their own, very much not a topic of discussion. Absolutely. If a woman's around, it's a no-no altogether. Absolutely. Why is this not a normal conversation? I mean, everybody's aware of what we have, our bits and our pieces, let's call it that. But yeah. I mean, it's something that we should be comfortable about. And I think someone like you coming on you on the show is definitely an inspiration yeah. to that. If we're not having these conversations, we're lacking that opportunity to educate and our friends and our peers and our loved ones and some of the most healthiest people that we may be associating ourselves with, right? Absolutely. So I think, first of all, there's been great movement towards female breast cancer awareness yeah. and not so much around testicular cancer. So, I mean, there's a lot of things coming up in the next few months that highlight those topics. The next thing is, I think, uh, like our reproductive health and, and our testicles, we often joke about it in a sort of friendly setting, but we mm. never talk about it seriously. Um, so I think it's so important for guys to become comfortable talking about sexual health and reproductive health, and it's such a normal thing. And the last thing that I think I need to highlight is that a lot of people have asked me, like, what happens after? It's called an orchidectomy, okay. which is a removal of the testicle, and that's yeah. what I've gone through. And I think yeah. a lot of people believe that if you lose a testicle, you're not going to have you, testosterone, yeah, can you you're not going to be able to train, you're not going to be able to have again? kids. Yeah. It's not the truth. Just like we have two kidneys, we have two testicles, and we can function perfectly normally with just one testicle. Um, so, I mean, I think that we need to highlight that as a, a way of making people less fearful of presenting to a doctor because they think they're going to lose a testicle and their lives are going to change dramatically. I don't need any testosterone replacement. I function completely normal. You are clearly so yeah. in the work. So you see, yeah, you are still dominating <laughs> yeah, that indeed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, man, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and being an inspiration. I think you're starting a conversation that needs to be had a lot more often. And I think everybody out there that has been listening now, do yourself checks, gentlemen. And if you have any kids that are growing up, even into their teenage years, I think I think it's a great time to start having regular checks, Dr. Emil says, at least once a month. And it's a perfect opportunity to just capitalize on our health that we have been blessed with. But Doc, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Obviously, we are going to be chatting to you again in the third part and answering cool. some of Mzanzi's questions. But Absolutely. man, thank you. I'm inspired by your journey. I'm glad you're back. It looks like you're stronger cool. than ever back on the bike. <laughs> and uh, for serving us, of course, I can't, I can't be more appreciative. But we'll carry on with this conversation in just a bit. For now, here's some more entertainment for you. It's my feel good. Yes, yeah, Mzanzi, welcome back. It's your feel-good breakfast show opening up on S3 and pushing through on that Health Tuesday, of course. We are talking about the awareness of testicular cancer, and we've got two exceptional gentlemen in the studio right now serving us. Of course, you've heard all about their stories as Dr. Emil Reed and Van Zaghi in the building. Now, gents, we've been incredibly educated on what this is, what's going on, and of course, we put the question out to Facebook and the rest of our audience, and we've had some, some incredible comments uh, from you, Mzanzi. So thank you for these questions. And the first one we're going to be looking at is from Lasanda Cause. He says, I'm a high expressor, I'm a 21-year-old male, concerned if I, if I get prostate cancer. Lately, there's a little delay when I'm urinating before I actually urinate, and also I have a little hard lump on my testes. So the question is, I was wondering as a young person, what is, do I have medical aid options? Where do I go to get this checked up? And is it possible that it might be prostate cancer? Dr. Miller, maybe you can start okay. off with you on I this think, one, yeah? I think, Raul, maybe I should start off with the question, can it be prostate cancer? Especially yeah, and, at that age. And, and at that age. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's, it's way too young. Nothing is impossible, but way too young. Having struggled to pass urine, also waking up at night, uh, we call it nocturia, going to the, the, the bathroom quite often to pass urine, feeling that you're not emptying your bladder. Yes, those are symptoms of prostate cancer, but the age actually makes it unlikely. Um, and, and usually we find people where there's a family history and a high risk of, of prostate cancer, okay. especially where the dad or other sibling had uh, prostate cancer before, Usually, those individuals should start going for checkups um, at the age of uh, 45. Okay. Um, and, and they after go on a yearly basis. People that have no family history of prostate cancer or a mother that had breast cancer, 
particularly if it's linked to a, sp a specific genetic abnormality, we call it the BRCA genes, okay. um, then they can wait until they're 50 in order to go for um, a digital rectal examination as well as a prostate-specific antigen blood test to see whether there is a possibility of prostate cancer or any other abnormality. Okay. I'm, I'm going to leave the second part of the question about the scrotal mass uh, for, for Michele to Yeah, to Michele, answer. I mean, maybe you can maybe just add to this. I mean, sure. is it something that he should be looking out for and what should he actually do in the scenario? Who should he maybe seek help from? Sure. And I know a question of medical aid you might not be able to touch on, but what are the options? Sure. So firstly, coming on to your point, his age is very much in favor of, of of testicular cancer, so between the ages of 15 and 35, which is very young, it's, it's one of the cancers with the youngest incidence, um, your risk of testic testicular cancer is the highest. So in this young guy, um, I think he's also at an age where it's very, he feels very vulnerable. Yeah. Obviously his mates, he doesn't want to talk to his mates about this and he also doesn't want to talk to his parents about it. So vulnerability again I like think we discussed. Just yeah. like this platform where he can sort of come here and, and he can talk about it. Um, from a medical perspective, it's very important that he's now recognized it. And like I said earlier, he needs to address it. Mm. Um, there's nothing more he can do as an individual to now monitor this. And I wouldn't suggest waiting because he's already felt a mass, which is an abnormality, and he knows that there's something wrong. And that's a good thing because it's identified Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and he's done the test. So well done, right? Exactly. That's, this is the point of everything. Yeah. So he's, the onus is on him now to seek medical attention. And, and what I want to tell is, I hope he's listening because he, he may be scared of what happens in the consultation room. Yeah. A urologist will examine him and they'll do a non-invasive ultrasound of the testicle, okay. which is not painful. It's a bedside investigation done in the consultation room. So it's one, one consultation, examination and an ultrasound which will then be highly suggestive or not suggestive of cancer. And then he can take that further. Sort of so in terms of medical aid, I mean, there are private and public hospitals that offer these services. Um, he might just wait a little bit longer in the public sector. But my advice is to truly go out, um, give your presenting complaint, and then they will triage you and send you to the respective areas, or to book a consultation with a urologist. Okay. Um, who will attend to him. And I think maybe I can just add one thing, that is just to, to decrease the fear for poor Lysander. Yes. And that there are a lot of other conditions that can also give you a mess that you can, can feel, a lump that you feel, and those are benign lesions, non-cancer uh, lesions, which is probably more important uh, than cancer, but it is important to, to rule out cancer. And, and those things we call like uh, varicose veins okay, of your, yeah. your testicle, we call it the varicocele, very important in young people. The second one we find is, is a cystic lesion of the epididymis, which is uh, what we call a spermatocele. And then also we need to understand that there's also other infections like viruses and bacteria, and also tuberculosis in the Western Cape that can cause a lump in your testis. Okay, so don't always expect the worst and jump straight to cancer. There could be numerous things. Again, exactly. I think Absolutely. go and seek the advice. But again, well done for doing your checks and actually being able to acknowledge that. Yes. Now, some more questions have come through. Again, another one is, a self-examination accurate or should you go to a doctor for professional health advice? What do you guys think? I mean, just, just straight off the bat, um, I think, like you said, regular, in terms of testicular cancer, prostate cancer, I'll leave, there's not really too much you can do as an individual, but regular self-examination is the most sensitive way of... of the, and, and the reality is, you know your own body, yeah. and, and examining yourself is not nearly as, as scary as going to someone else to do that. Yes. Um, so I think, I mean, I can say it's, it's definitely accurate, um, but it's a screening method that they need to follow up, and uh, which I, is important. And I, and I think the sooner people start to self-examine yeah. themselves, the better they are aware to what normal is for them. So if there's an abnormality, they'll be able to pick it up much quicker as opposed to not examining yourself. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, for when it comes to prostate examination, there's no self-examination at all. And you just need to wait your turn according to the risk to whether you seek advice or help from your general practitioner or a, a urologist. All right, well, doctors, Michele, Vanzaghi, Dr. Emil Reed, gentlemen, thank you for being on the couch this morning and having 
a normal conversation. I think it's important to highlight that amongst all men. This is something we should all be chatting about. And obviously, again, doing your self-checks. The education information today was incredible. Again, your inspiring story was something I'm appreciative of you for sharing today. And for anybody else that can resonate, you can reach out to both of them, obviously, online. You can steal your straps right now. But for us, we're continuing with our Health Tuesday. We're heading to the kitchen. <laughs>